This is great. Uh, we're so excited to be here with you here in Paris. Um, we, as the Marvel Global Portfolio, are there any Marvel fans out here that want to talk about Marvel today? Anyone excited about Endgame like the rest of us are? I'm going to tell you everything that happens tonight. Um, but hopefully... Hopefully everybody has been enjoying the season of superheroes, and it's really uh, amazing to see these extraordinary characters here in Paris for all of us. But this is just the beginning of what we're going to be doing with Marvel in the parts. So I know there's a lot of tiny little words on this chart, but it's just meant to show you that our Marvel presence at our parks around the world, it's, it's really prevalent everywhere. So. From Disneyland in California, we um, transformed Tower of Terror to Guardians of the Galaxy Mission Breakout, which has been a huge success, one of the most highly rated attractions now at the Disneyland Resort. Um, we've got characters at Walt Disney World, we have characters on our ships in Marvel Day at Sea, um, obviously in Paris, we have our incredible season of superheroes, and then in Hong Kong, we started with the Iron Man experience as our first attraction. And just a couple weeks ago, we opened the Ant and the Wasp Nano Battle attraction, which has already been a huge hit there. So we've got Marvel coming everywhere around the world. And so we like to think of it uh, in two ways. We really approach our Marvel experiences either in a celebratory fashion, like what you're seeing today uh, at the Studios Park, where we are really celebrating the characters um, we celebrate it through sneak peeks and, and film uh, trailers, through our food, through our merchandise. Um, even in this image, you've got Mickey and Minnie dressed up in their favorite characters. So this is one way that we portray uh, our Marvel stories. But we also do it, we've started to do it now, in an immersive experience. So this is when you really enter our attractions and you start to be really enveloped in those stories, in the environments. Um, so you're seeing that with the Stark Expo uh, and Iron Man, Guardians of the Galaxy, as I mentioned, California, and there's a hint of what's coming next, and obviously that will be coming here as well. But Scott, tell as, us a little bit about as how we, dig we into about it. As we dig into all of these attraction development, land development, we have our, these guiding principles that kind of are our North Star for how we're going to represent Marvel, because for the first time, we as guests are included into the storytelling. But this is happening real and in our world. This is happening here and now in the land. And, and what we look at when we look at these guiding principles is what role are we going to play alongside these characters? We've never had a role in the comics or the film. So for the first time, we're looking at these stories in all new ways. And we'll show you those as we go forward. Uh, but also, we need to make sure that this needs to work for all of our guests, whether you know every character, all 8,000 of them, or this is your first Marvel experience. And we want to make sure we have that humor and levity that we see in all of the films and, and know uh, to love about these characters that are so relatable. And we get a lot of questions about, well, is it going to be like the comics or is it going to be like the films? We're inspired by all of that. The look and feel of the films is extraordinary. We want to lean into that. But the depth of storytelling that we see in the comics is, is inspiring us every day. Today we have three amazing attractions that, that put you in the middle of the action, and especially in Hong Kong with the Iron Man experience, put you right in the story in Hong Kong, where there's a threat to Hong Kong Bay, and you and Iron Man uh, get to uh, kind of save the day and save the city. Um, but of course, also in Guardians of the Galaxy Mission Breakout, and this has been a, an extraordinary transformation of the Tower of Terror in Anaheim, but to include not only the Guardians of the Galaxy and Tavon and us having a role alongside these characters is just a really fun uh, ride. But what John and I were just in Hong Kong last week to open was Ant-Man and the Wasp Nano Battle. But what's next? I think there's a place <laughs> near here that's going to have a little extra Marvel in our future. So um, obviously we're thinking big when we're thinking Paris. Um, but for us, it really starts, as you know, with, with every attraction, with everything we do here, really with a story and a backstory. And for us, the core of that is Tony Stark's, Stark's father, Howard, whom you may all know. So um, back in the 50s, he had a 
secret facility here in Paris. Uh, and it's been dormant for a while. Uh, but Tony Stark has decided to renovate, fix it up, and turn it into something really, really great. So he wanted to create this new place, this campus, to invite people in, to invite you in, to be the heroes of tomorrow. So, exactly, and, and what's great about that is this is for the first time we have not seen a headquarters or a base or any of these Avengers facilities open to us for the first time um, until now. So when we look at this brand new campus that's going to be kind of the European base for operation, it is finally open because through the events that we've seen unfold, especially as we're going to see in a couple of weeks, the world needs more heroes, and that's why this is being built. So as we look at this, and, and you may have noticed uh, a couple of symbols, a couple of Easter eggs hidden within this, um, but one of the symbols I want to talk about is the Worldwide Engineering Brigade. This is an organization that we've invented to expand the story universe of Marvel. And what's great about this is this is an organization that's based on all these young geniuses that are inventing the technology of tomorrow. That's something that we can relate to, we can join, we can become a member of. There's also a very critical member, Peter Parker, that happens to be a part of that. Oh, this is working. Um, so we get wrapped up in a Peter Parker story, which of course leads us to a Spider-Man story. Um, but I do want to point out one thing on this, on this logo. So we released this just a couple of weeks ago, maybe two, three weeks ago. The very next day, I saw a picture of someone in Paris that had printed that out from the blog on a shirt. Is that person here today? Is that person going to admit? Fess up, fess up. It's you. You can come talk to me afterwards. Uh, I, nice job, nice job. We want to know where we can get the t-shirt. I will tell you that our graphics team, <laughs> our design team, that came right to our offices the next day. Everybody was super motivated by that. So thank you for that and recognizing that. This is awesome. We are leaning into web all around the world, um, and as part of that adventure that we're going to go on, and like I said, we're going to see Spider-Man there, we work directly with Ryan Meiderding, who's the head of visual development for Marvel Studios, to develop a brand new suit. This is a suit that is exclusive to parks and resorts. This is also something that debuted here first in Paris, so when you're at the season of superheroes, that is the brand new suit that has been designed by Marvel Studios. Um, and there's so many more details that I want to tell you about this land, but you're going to have to wait, and, and there are, be looking for more details because they are going to be unfolding from here on out until opening. But one thing I do want to talk about next, and invite Caroline May to join with me on, on discussing that, is the transformation of Hotel New York into Disney's Hotel New York, the art of art. hotel that opened exactly 27 years ago, so we're so excited to be here with you tonight on this anniversary. As of January of this year, this hotel is currently under construction to reopen in summer of 2020. It will undergo a complete interior rehab. The, uh, this hotel will evoke the contemporary sophistication of New York, which is home to Marvel, its iconic superheroes, and the artists that created them. The interior of this hotel will feel like a luxury style Manhattan establishment, reminiscent of Avengers headquarters, or a place you might even find Tony Stark. It was also very important to us to make sure that we weaved into the interior quintessential New York motifs like Art Deco. The logo here we released a couple months ago, and this is reminiscent of this idea of incorporating deco. We were inspired by marquees and signage in New York and created this custom typeface, but it's a little bit of a contemporary take, which matches really well with the overall aesthetic of this hotel. The main focal point of this hotel really is its extensive art collection, and I'm so excited to be able to share with you a sneak peek of some of the artwork that we'll have inside. As you can see, 
we're really showcasing a diversity of different styles that are representative of Marvel. It was important to us to not only show comic book art and film concept art, while of course those will be included in this hotel, but to really showcase everything else in between. So we'll be showing storyboards and costumes and props and production design and even some theme park design and so much more. Big, bold pieces of art will be on display, similarly to how you would see them in a contemporary art gallery. I think many times when we think about hotel art, we tend to think of it as being decorative and kind of bland, but what we're doing with this hotel is making it feel more like a gallery that exists inside the space. This collection of art, we have almost 300 pieces of art comprised of limited edition pieces, artwork from Marvel Archives, and also art that we've been working with artists from all around the world to create exclusively for this hotel. One of the most fascinating parts of this project has been working with these international Marvel artists to talk to them about how Marvel characters and storytelling has inspired them and their artwork, and how this is translated into each piece in a unique way. And these are the artists that are defining what Marvel art is today. I think whether you are a huge fan of Marvel or you don't know very much about Marvel at all, you will be truly surprised and inspired by this art collection that we have inside the hotel. This is an interior concept rendering of the lobby. As you can see, the interior, again, is very contemporary and sophisticated and very cosmopolitan. The color palette is a little bit more subdued, and the reason for this is because we really want to focus our guests' attention on these bright, beautiful pieces of artwork that will be all around the lobby. The main showcase for this lobby really are these large windows on either side of the lobby. And these were inspired by the comic book page. So we actually worked with a Marvel comic book artist to create an exclusive story and exclusive artwork. Of, and it showcases a story of the Avengers assembling in New York, as well as a story of Spider-Man. The process for creating this was very similar to how you would create a comic book page. Um, except, of course, this is epically large and it's also a piece of permanent architecture. But what's so great about this is we're completely changing the context, so our guests will be able to get up close and see a lot of the detail, which is a completely different experience than somebody might have if they were to open up a comic book. This is the Downtown Diner, which is an upscale diner inside the hotel. It is quintessentially New York in so many different ways. It has that kind of contemporary take on deco, and this is really our opportunity to celebrate the legacy of Marvel, the 80 years of artwork. Um, and we're doing that by showing, kind of paring it down and only showing black and white line art, which is really what started it all for Marvel. So we will have a chronology of history. We will have everyone from Jack Kirby and Steve Ditko to Scotty Young and Sarah Pacelli represented in this space. And because we've decided to just do black and white line art, what we're able to see is how each of these artists had such a unique style and how they inspired and influenced the generations to come. This is a sampling of that type of artwork. Some of the pieces are from the archives, but some of it is completely new. So for example, the Captain America and the Groot are new pieces of artwork that are exclusive to this space. And we have 90 unique pieces inside of this restaurant. We also had the opportunity to show some of these superheroes that are lesser known but still fan favorites. So my personal favorite, Miss Marvel, which is up there in the center, we're able to show her in this space. This is a photograph of one of the rooms inside of the hotel. The color palette was influenced by Iron Man's armor. And for the artwork, what we wanted to do was really show, really put together an exhaustive combination of different artworks so that if you were staying here with your family or if you're a repeat guest, you would see different artwork in the room every time that you were there. All of the artwork is contemporary comic book covers or variant comic book covers. 
But what we've done is we've stripped away all of the text from them, so you can really appreciate them for the amazing works of artwork that they are. And they'll be printed very large in the room, so our guests will be able to get up close and really notice a lot of the detail in them. The other special thing about this hotel is that each floor of the hotel will be dedicated to a different superhero. So if you went into the elevator and you hit the third floor, which is the Hulk floor, as the elevator door is open, you would be greeted by a mural of the Hulk, and as you walk down the hallway, you would see different artist interpretations of that same superhero. So that's a little bit of a sneak peek of some of the artwork that's in the hotel, but I also brought with me an interview with two artists that are creating exclusive artwork for the hotel as we speak. My name is Ryan Meinerding, I'm Head of Visual Development at Marvel Studios. Uh, I've worked at Marvel for around 13 years and have been here since Iron Man 1, so I've led the design on, on 14 films. My name is Andy Park and I'm the Director of Visual Development at Marvel Studios. In the Visual Development Department, um, we start off creating artwork in the very beginning of the movie making process. We're approached to create design work, mainly to design the characters and the heroes that you see throughout the films. When I heard about Disney's Hotel New York, I thought it was really cool because when you think about Marvel Comics, you always think about New York. So to have a hotel dedicated to so much of Marvel's history and legacy, it's really special. My first reaction is that's amazing. I mean, the, the idea of taking the, the almost 80 years worth of, of artwork that's been generated for, for Marvel Comics and, and everything that's come after that and, and having it be treated as fine art in a, in a, in a hotel is, is an amazing thing and I'm so happy to be a part of it. These characters have inspired me for almost my entire life and, and to sort of be able to have that artwork celebrated in a tradition along with all of the other iconic Marvel artists is incredible. So I'm working on something for the Captain America floor um, to go around the elevators uh, that is and transitioning some of my concept art that I worked on for the actual films into a piece that will work in that space. And I'm also working on an Avengers piece that's going to go around the, the lobby of the convention center. Um, it's going to be a big action battle sequence where the Avengers are working together to defeat, you know, all the villains. The particular piece I'm doing, which depicts Captain Marvel in full binary form, uh, full energy, her helmet on, was originally illustrated when I was working and leading the team on Captain Marvel, but I'm taking that artwork and I'm further adapting that image to be an exclusive image that's going to be seen in the hotel. I mean, one of the things we try to do at Marvel Studios is bring enough detail and realism to the designs of the costumes that they actually feel like they do exist or should exist in the real world. So the idea of having the, the artwork printed large enough that people can get up close and see the fabric textures and the different seams that we're putting into the costumes, and I hope that's what they take away from it, that the characters don't, not, don't kind of feel like comic characters anymore. They feel like real, living, breathing you know, people that, that could exist in our world and exist in the films. <laughs> 